Hi, welcome to Aquatic Australia. I'm your host, Ian Sharkey-Jones, so-called because I'm a shark fan. In these videos, I invite you to join me and share my experiences on, under and around the waters of my Australian home. Our first dive is at Porpoise Caves Reef. We drop off the stern of the boat next to a 10 meter wall. From today's dives, three topics emerge. Rays, crays and holes. Diving along the base of the wall, we find ourselves looking at a lot of holes for lobsters and crayfish. And doing that, we find a lot of colorful sponges and corals and soft corals all hanging from the ceilings and walls, wherever there's a shadow. And that's one of the things we're going to be focusing a lot on today is the sheer color and exuberance in these shadowy areas. They're absolutely fantastic for a night dive. Of course, the main reason that most West Australian divers look in holes is for crayfish. And that brings us to our third topic for today, rays. Lots of them, especially these large bull stingrays that can grow up to 300 odd kilograms. Wherever you find divers looking for crayfish, you often find large stingrays. These guys follow the divers looking to snag a feed. These gentle creatures move serenely over the reef, flying like birds. They copped a bad reputation after the tragic death of Steve Irwin, um, but they don't deserve the fearsome reputation. Do they have stings? Sure, big ones. Are they dangerous? They can be, but only if they're attacked. They're purely defensive, and to divers, they're like old friends. They come up and see us. These bull stingrays have a wonderfully inquisitive nature and will come right up to divers. It's important that you stay calm and not panic. They won't hurt you. They have a wonderfully inquisitive nature and uh, want to know what you're about. But so long as you don't try to grab them or pin them down or attack them from above, you're perfectly safe from them. But like any wild creature, they should be respected. Rays belong to an order of cartilaginous fish that includes sharks called elasmobranchs and they're very close cousins indeed to sharks. At the tail we can see the infamous sting. Now these stings are serrated and barbed, they also sometimes have venom so when they go in, they don't come out easily. And it's important uh, to get medical help, but it's very rare that people are stung, usually if they're stepped on. We continue our dive along the wall in about 16 to 20 meters, passing caves full of lantern fishes, um, seeing more stingrays and various other things such as these black and white striped fish called Old Wives, a particular favorite of mine. With our air getting lower, it's time to turn around and head back to the boat. So we head up the cliff to the top of the wall at 10 meters and swim back to the boat. One of the greatest joys in scuba diving is the ability to fly free like a bird flying over the over a wall like this you really get that feeling now under the boat we make a safety stop for three minutes at five meters and that's the end of our dive our next dive is at kingston spit on the northeast side of rotnest in about 10 meters of water heading down the anchor chain we spot a beautiful ball chin groper a popular sport fish and eating fish This shallow site is full of rock arches and small tunnels and ledges. It being cray season, there are a lot of cray pots around, but we never touch them. This colourful sea slug 
is a nudie prank. Jacques Cousteau, the inventor of the aqualung, called them butterflies of the sea because of their many colours. They're a firm favourite with divers. These wrasse are as curious and inquisitive as they are colourful. Completely unafraid, they come right up to the camera. Always looking around our fins where we stir up the bottom, looking for a feed. And we're back to my favourite topic of colourful cave life. And inevitably, if you spend long enough looking in caves, you find crayfish. And when you find crayfish, you find crayfishermen. This gives us a chance to look at our third topic for today. Let's watch it, some crayfishing in action. The diver uses a long stick with a wire loop as a noose, that he gets that around the back of the crayfish to hold on to it and then drag it out and release the crayfish, sizes it up briefly and he bags it. Back on surface the first thing he'll do then is check the crays against the strict size measurement and if they're a female with any eggs and uh, if necessary the crays are released. There are very strict limits in Western Australia. That's it for today, thanks very much for joining us.